It's the end of November, so the days are getting shorter and colder and wetter and a bit windier. So there's not much going on in the solar shed solar-wise, but I have had, well, an idea of a little project I'd like to do for this time of year. It's the run-up to the holiday season, Christmas for me, and with a three-year-old in the house, I can't really get away with not decorating the house. And I've decided to put, well, addressable RGB LEDs everywhere I can think of. So giving this some thought, I thought that these sort of traditional uh, Christmas lights may come in most handy and these rings but I wasn't quite entirely happy with the design of either of them particularly this ring because when you think about it you've got the ring you've got a wire from the ring that's going to need to connect to a microcontroller of some description and this is a uh, D1 Mini clone um, and then you're going to need a wire to go from the D1 Mini to power this ring so I thought that could be a fair bit neater. And I also thought that interfacing here could be uh, a little bit more tidy as well. Now luckily these do come generally with an extra wire. So we've got that little plug fits in there. And then we've just got some ends. But I wasn't particularly happy with just shoving the ends in my uh, Wemos D1 mini clone so um i thought do you know what i can do a better solution here well i say better but anyway it's my attempt at being slightly neater uh, so i designed a pcb which as you can see takes a wemos d1 mini there in the middle of the pcb um there's a, a row of pin headers just in case you want to attach something else later and then there are 16 uh, places for well chips on the outside and I've chosen to use that really nice SK6812 so I've bought some of those chips and uh, designed this PCB and I'm quite impressed and pleased with it I decided that I would uh, be able to put some jumper points here at the top for the data in so I can choose various different pins on the Wemos D1 Mini to actually drive the LEDs. I've also put a terminal, uh, a point there for the terminal block, or you could just wire wires straight in to those through holes there to power um, it. Or there is a USB connector here, micro USB, surface mount micro USB, uh, which means the power can actually come in at the side here rather than into the Wemos because of course the Wemos D1 Mini uh, micro USB there uh, would foul uh, this LED or if you had a wire plugged into it it would probably just cover this particular chip here so uh, you'd end up with 15 not 16 and uh, yeah I am quite pleased because I've built a few of these uh, but that's not without its own issues now there is a bit of an issue with this design as you can see down here with this bodge wire unfortunately I've made a mistake in the design of this PCB and the data out from LED 13 here to the data in of LED 14 well there's an issue let me show that a bit closer up yes yeah, so i've got my microscope out here and if we look at the back of the pcb and we get it in focus um we can see it's quite difficult to see on here because this white uh, solder mask here but i think we can just make that out here um this is the output from led 13 here and it goes along this track and up here takes a slight dog leg and then there can you see the issue my via which is just here actually crashes into the ground plane this area around here so the data out of led 13 goes straight to ground so i've had to work out how to fix that uh, and let me explain how I did it. 
Yeah, so to fix that issue, let's uh, imagine that via is looks something a bit like this. There's obviously a uh, plated through hole from one side of the PCB to the other. And uh, at the top of that via is connecting to the data uh, pin output from LED 13. But unfortunately, this side is crashing in to the ground plane. So all I've done is take a small sharp drill and effectively twisted it to uh, take out a small section which then uh, eliminates that connection between data and ground and then I've just had to rebuild my data output there on a bodge wire to get these working. So admittedly it's a bit of a shame that I've had to do that but they are working now and I've made four of these uh, with the intention that they're going to go in the windows at the front of the house and light up the whole window in Christmassy colours. But those circular boards are no good for that string of LEDs that I've also bought uh, so I made this little shield or termination board uh, that will just take a Wemos D1 Mini here again including the clones uh, there's the jumper pads there to choose the data pin now in hindsight I probably should have put that on the bottom of the board not on the top because of course when you solder on your Wemos D1 Mini if that's what you decide to do then that means you can't get to those points anymore but uh, yeah, perhaps revision two, I will improve that. Uh, but yeah, there's just then space for a termination block, terminal block, sorry, and also three pads to actually be able to uh, solder to the strings of LED, just five volts, D out and ground. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite pleased they're going to make the job a lot easier. Now, of course, I mentioned about uh, underneath the uh, Wemos D1 Mini. Of course, you could put this on a uh, pin header and socket, and then you wouldn't have that issue. Uh, but again, yeah, I'll definitely update this design and uh, see if I can make it a little bit better. But you'll notice also I have uh, removed the ground plane there underneath where the antenna of the uh, ESP8266 sits uh, to hopefully help with wi-fi signal and, and no reflections but yeah we can see it there and more clearly on the other side uh, i've removed the ground plane so hopefully yeah these are more suited to the strings of leds now of course the esp8266 won't control these uh, leds without some software on them and i've gone for this wled and uh, it's a fully featured open source a uh, piece of firmware you can drop on to an ESP8266 very easily and it will control these RGB LEDs. Now there's a lot of menus and uh, options in here but I'm not going to go through them today. But the basics are of course that we can turn the master brightness up. I've got red LEDs there not showing very well on the camera but they're nice and red for me. Uh, and we can obviously change the colour as we like. There's blue not showing up great and uh, if we put it in the middle we're getting a version of white but that's just the RGB LEDs all on at the same time. So if I turn off the colour I've still got the white option and that's using the white LED, the warm white or neutral white LED in the SK68. So of course I have a myriad of options that I can choose here or uh, just press an option straight away for a standard colour but there's all sorts of presets you can set in here um, effects um, so for instance we could blink the leds and you can blink them between two colours as well if you uh, set that up if i turn the second colour to green and now it's going from red to green how festive is that? Well, there's loads of effects in here. A big, long list of about 80, 85, I think, uh, effects that you can get the, uh, the LEDs to, uh, to, to make, along with some colour palettes. This is really fully featured. But one of the nice features about this 
is uh, you can sync the lights and if I sync the second one well they should both start doing the same thing uh, at the same time roughly let me just try that out yeah, now I have the two LEDs showing up here, both with sync turned on. And now they should both start changing at the same time just by controlling one of them. How useful is that? So these can be a long way away from each other as long as they're on the same network. They will change and do everything together. How super is that? Really impressed with this software. Now I've also uh, soldered up one of these, so again these are now controllable through the same WLED software and uh, well I guess if I wanted to I could sync these with those same uh, lights here but uh, I don't expect that the patterns are going to work terribly well in a circle and in a string but now I want to string these up around the house and uh, I'll show you the results. So there we have it then, a simple string of LEDs there on the shed, uh, running the effect called Merry Christmas. Sorry, you'll have to excuse the road noise, but I've also put another string of the WS2811 uh, sticking out of a bit of conduit at the front door. I think they look quite nice. So there we have it then, four window lights and the lights over the porch. Um, all in sync because they're all using the same colour and the same effect but the transitions not in sync are they uh never mind anyway i'm quite pleased with that is that enough or do you think i need more this year not sure hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up subscribe down below comment if you can and i will see you next time thanks for watching now i just want to get out of this rain <laughs>